Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I'm going to be taking N.K. Jemisin's masterclass on science fiction and fantasy writing. Actually, I'm going to be taking it with two of my friends, Shay from Shay with the Hobbies and Becca from Becca C. Smith. We're all going to be taking the course around the same time and then I'm hopeful that we are going to have a live stream where we're just going to kind of gush about what we learned and N.K. Jemisin in general because some of y'all might remember that for one of our author tube chat book club picks, we read the fifth season. I have also tried writing like N.K. Jemisin. Basically all that to say, I have a little bit of an author writer crush on her. I really look up to her. I really admire her journey into kind of authorhood and all these steps she's made along the way. I have so enjoyed her books. I have gushed about them to everyone. Admittedly, I still have only read the fifth season, though I did tell the boyfriend about it and he has completed this series and freaking loved it. I told my dad, who's also completed the series and he also loved it, and I told my mom and she's now part of the way through the third book. <laughs> I'm behind, it's fine. <laughs> As someone who is attempting to write several sort of fantasy stories and has struggled a little bit along the way, I am so freaking pumped for this class. And which masterclass tells me that I will learn how to create diverse characters, build a world from scratch, and get published. So without further ado, let me welcome you to the vlog and review of N.K. Jemisin's masterclass. dinner of champions. So initially my plan is just to finish my bubble tea, have a little bit of food, and watch the first course. Number one, be your instructor, N.K. Jemison. But we'll see if I watch more. Oh, welcome to N.K. Jemison's Masterclass. Before we begin, we'd like to know more about you. Thanks for that. What is your level of proficiency in fantasy and science fiction writing? Ooh, <sighs> this is an interesting one. Let me ponder this as I stab some pasta. I'm gonna say intermediate only because I've written Project Death and my Meridian Map series and I've done a lot of urban fantasy, but I'd say even with all of those, the world building aspect has fallen short. I've attempted a more sci-fi book once during NaNoWriMo. I loved the concept of my alien zoo, but I'm just not qualified at all, I feel like, to do sci-fi and the world building. I'm excited for this class. I need this class. I'm gonna say intermediate. Debatably, I feel like beginner, but because I've attempted to write some before, I'm gonna go intermediate. How familiar are you with N.K. Jemisin? I'll say very. What are you most interested in learning from N.K. Jemisin? Practical takeaways, tips, applicable learning. Yes. Inspiration, motivation. That too. Advanced subject skills. Of course. Theoretical or philosophical learnings. Yes. Behind the scenes stories about <laughs> apostrophes work. <laughs> Hold on. I assume, I'm just gonna point with my fork. They mean about N.K. Jemisin's work, but <laughs> it's fine. Hearing a personal journey, basic foundational subject skills. I mean, honestly, I would hear N.K. Jibson talk about just about anything, so I'm gonna say all of the things. Oh, it's time! Ah! Oh. Would help if I had volume one in it. This intro always is so fun. I don't know who made that, but they crushed it. When I began my career as a writer, people were upfront with me about how hard it would be. What I don't think people said to me is that if you are legit good, if you work and hone your craft, you will eventually break in because you're a good writer. If you aren't good yet, work hard, get better, and then keep trying, and you will eventually make it. Oh my god. Oh, I'm so excited. Hey, okay, Jemison. To change the profession of your existence. I'm N.K. Jemison, and this is my masterclass. I am so hyped. I'm gonna go ahead and take a second because I already took some notes. This is mostly for me for the purposes of the class, but having taken two of these master classes already specifically about fiction writing, none of the intros have made me as hyped as this one. I love that she makes a point that her series, her class, is gonna be for those where the next step is publication. She jokes about how she was, you know, seeing published novels, reading them and being like, I have better stuff than that. And that's really what was the ultimate push for her to do, to publish. So she's saying that her class is gonna be for those people who feel like among the books they're reading they're like you know my work is kind of close to that or I can get there or I'm there already I think I write better books than some of the ones I'm reading that are already published so I feel like that's a much better indicator than just saying that you're like a beginner or this is an intermediate course or whatever like this is specifically for people who are at this point I feel like she also already has a little bit more humor she kind of laughed at herself as she's going along too and I'm 
excited. She makes the point that how we as writers are the ones who can shape publication and the way that the publishing industry will look in the future with the characters that we write. She's also going to teach us about how to build worlds from the ground up and also take her psychology, her counseling background as she gives advice on how to build characters. So I'm freaking pumped. Okay. So we have elements of world building, micro world building exercise, build your world, another micro world building, conceiving the culture, power dynamics, world building, inventing science and magic, world building research, immersing your reader, choosing a point of view, the psychology of characters, forget the rugged individual archetype, the hierarchy of characterization, in multiple parts, how to publish your book, seeking publication, how to find a literary agent, surviving the literary marketplace, writing while marginalized. And I think that's the last one. Let's freaking do this. Away from our world a little bit. So don't be hesitant about really striding away. Belief systems are certain uh, perspectives on life. Um, and so we constantly see uh, repetition. Okay, it's the next day double star day so I got a drink and I'm actually really excited I finally got the workbook to actually download it was a me problem not a masterclass problem and now this workbook is I don't know if you can see that page 3 of 34 I'm really excited to read this guide to 20 of the most common subgenres in speculative fiction I don't know a lot about speculative fiction as like an overarching title I think it just encompasses kind of sci-fi and fantasy but not positive. As someone who attempted to write like in Kate Jemison, I'm excited to see what she includes in her masterclass since her routine had evolved over time depending on where she was in her life, which is, you know, makes sense. But here's where we're at. Macro world building part one. So my hope is that I'm going to listen to the class and then I'm going to try and take for both Project Death and the Meridian Maps and take her advice each kind of macro micro way through. We'll just kind of see what new discoveries I make. I'm really excited. Again, I world building is the thing I'm arguably the worst at. Um, and I know it affects so much. That's the fun part of fantasy. I just don't think that I'm good at it. You know, I enjoy the worlds I create. I just don't know that they're like submersive enough for the reader. So, and hers definitely are. Let's watch macro world building exercise. As you're creating this world that your readers understand, then you're able to create a world that feels more plausible. I really freaking enjoy that she started with the map first. Let me see if I can show you guys. Also, this is a behind the scenes of how I <laughs> decide to stand on my chair. Whee! So you do this exercise and I drew out my world, which was very cool. The thing I'm still trying to figure out is what my X is going to be. But I think part of that, she did say that your X element can just be that it's a completely different world from Earth. But of course, for Project Death, I have death is their god. Um, but I'm trying to think how that would affect the physical planet that they live on and I don't know that I quite have it yet so I might just stick with this being a different planet. It is a desert planet um, for the most part by and large. So, ow, I smacked myself. I like the depth with which she figured out some of this stuff. I'm trying to figure out how I could implement this in my own writing routine as I tend to need to zero draft something before I figure it out. But that could just be part of it. I could zero draft with an idea and then come back and then before the first draft I just implement all of this world building and why not? You know the difference between a zero draft and a first draft for me is they're so they're so starkly different that I often don't even tell people what I'm working on during the zero draft because I know it's going to change significantly. <laughs> like I'm still trying to figure out the story that I'm trying to tell. So I could just do my world building after the zero draft in depthly whatever <laughs> now rather than move on to the next episode i did just watch jessica's and i just had a video post i do have a writing stream happening soon but i wanted to show you i broke my book buying day besides for the writing craft books that i did recently and i got ace of spades freaking pumped i listen to the author's podcast and i really love it and also look at this while i was at the bookstore i got these book nerd pride socks so I figured I'd put them on have my little feetsies be warm ha, ha. let's see them in all their magnificence oh my god the hearts on the bottom <laughs> that's so funny this is so cute I'm so excited 
Oh, oh, these are nice socks too, actually. Yay! My calves might be a little thick for them, but look. <laughs> One of the things I loved when reading the fifth season was how bisexuality or pansexuality or just these spectrums of sexuality were such a non-issue in this world. And that's one of the things that like, you know, and K. Jefferson is having a lot of commentary that she makes a point in her masterclass that, you know, people might not be receptive to something in your current world, but if you can put it in this different world, people are much more open to the general concepts. She's able to speak to marginalized experiences in our world, but in this other world where I do think people are more receptive to them, but she could also build this world to be whatever she wants it to be. So sexuality isn't an issue. And there are black and brown people who are the main characters that you don't see as often in fantasy. So anyways, my socks are very cute. And N.K. Jimson's great. <laughs> All right, time to write. Okay, I have, as ever, taken an overabundance of notes, but <laughs> I'm enjoying it so much. I loved how the past three lessons have really been sort of practical, you do it alongside me. And in fact, at one point she shows on the screen, like here are some characteristics of a society, pick some of these, and it feels not like hand-holding, but like it, it, she's with you every step of the way as you kind of work through what she's saying. And I love that so much. You know, they could have not put that in there, right? And just been like, well, you know what elements make up a society, just pick and choose some of these. But I, it, it was just nice to have them put that on the screen for you, take a moment, look them over, brainstorm here and there how yours will be a little bit different because of your element X. And you really just build it with her and it's wonderful. I also like in the micro world building section how she has something called acculturation, which is never a word that I'd heard before. Basically like do people assign meaning to these sort of insignificant differences amongst their people, right? So they have skin color, they have hair color, um, lips. If someone's lactose intolerant is an example she uses as well. Like, uh, are these an important difference? Do Does the society assign a meaning to these differences? In some ways, this has actually helped me realize how much I've done with Project Death. Uh, my issue earlier, <laughs> as I was watching the first macro world building lesson, I was starting to be concerned because I didn't build up a whole world. I built up more or less a country regional thing that the entire story's told around. Um, in fact, I have this idea that there's an outside world, right? And we're not gonna find that out uh, potentially in the doll. <laughs> like, I don't know that my characters know about it, but just in my head, this was a thing that was gonna be, I, I knew, right? But I never thought about what the actual outside world was. So when you're building it downward um, or up and then like when the triangle's like this, uh, I was like, oh shit, I have no idea. But as we got more and more into the micro and everything, I realized that I'd actually done more for Project Death than I thought, which was reassuring. And also I have steps to move forward to I think really just flesh it out, which I'm so excited for. I love that she has in there, ask yourself a series of questions. What are the different roles for the people? What are the punishments for not following the roles? What are a reward for doing your role exceptionally well? Who has the power? Who's trying to maintain that power? How do less power people kind of function in this world. And she has a bit how they can be not people, right? But she uses people as the example I'll throw out and how you can make tiny minute changes to it. There's just stuff that I never would have thought about, but of course, once you're listening to her, you're like, that makes so much sense, of course. <laughs> I really loved her quote when she was using an example of man spreading, which is like people who have less power in our society tend to take up less space in our society. And kind of just thinking of that as an example when you're building out your society. So, and she does touch on sensitivity readers and how to, you know, cultural appropriation and the ways that you could potentially do cultural appropriation Right. And she talks about sensitivity readers and also brings up that you just need to set aside a budget to pay for this kind of thing, whether it's sensitivity readers, which should be included, but also just research books and things like that. Like you're gonna need to do research if you're going to be taking stuff, especially when it's more based in our world with people and beliefs that still currently exist. So I just loved it. I also wanna bring up the workbook again here because again, whoever designs these each time, amazing. Phenomenal. As someone who did an I Tried Writing like N.K. Jemisin, I do love that she says, I do not recommend that anyone follow another author's writing routine. That's a fantastic way to increase anxiety. <laughs> 
<laughs> but she talks about her zero with draft and kind of the word count she gets when she's on deadline and not on deadline. But I like that she included these Element X examples. So like the Hunger Games and Pokemon were some that really stood out to me to some that I knew. Aliens, you know, it's just also the design, the design. Here's that acculturation again. Anyways, it has some really cool helpful exercises within the workbook that are not, uh, that reinforce her message, that are not like word for word what she was saying as an example in there. So it's nice to just kind of compound it. It's also taking what she said and if you've watched the course already, it just puts it in like a quicker kind of format. In fact, I'd argue that this is my favorite workbook of the three courses that I've taken so far. And I think we're gonna get to more characters here soon, which is really exciting. It's also worth noting, I did have an idea for a story while I was listening to her talk about the power dynamic. So I'm really excited for that. I feel like this is worth stating because I also got some ideas when I was listening to the Neil Gaiman masterclass that I've just kind of jotted down. Um, so what I wanna do, when I finish this class completely and I have time, um, is I want to go back to that idea I had and retake her class and kind of build that idea out from scratch following her kind of order system. So it would be building the world first, which is not something I ever really do. But yeah, I think it would be fun and we'll just see how it goes. So this is, you know, this is a far off idea. Um, but I also think that this class would be worth me rewatching several times and referencing back the workbook anytime I kind of go through maybe the second draft time period for me. Um, so. Mm -hmm. One of the things I loved most as I finished out the kind of world building aspects or the world building lessons from N.K. Jemison was how she said it's all about making it feel right for the reader. So you need to do the research, yes, but she puts a big stock into traveling to the place, smelling the place, getting the feel of the place. In fact, in later lessons, she talks about how important it is to talk to kids because they have an uncanny way of speaking the truth in a little bit different manner than adults ever would. And I loved that as like a quick tip that I wouldn't have even thought of. When I took James Patterson's masterclass, he made the point that if you, you know, you're constantly waging this war about how much research to do. <laughs> and if you don't get it right, you will lose readers. But N.K. Jemisin, you know, reinforces that message, of course, but also seems to be of the opinion that it's about the feel, right? And infusing the feel of a place. So you can leave out some of the science, some of the background research, so long as you're getting the feel right. It's about helping the reader live and immerse themselves in that experience. She also talked about travel several times, which I love. <laughs> She's saying about one of the pros is how you can write off your travel expenses. She reinforces that message later on in the publication process. And I just love that. I want to begin K. Jensen when I grow up if only, right? <laughs> she does mention how you can look for some grants. She got some of those when she was doing her research and traveling. But the big tip that I took away from this is to set a time limit on your research, like a week, is I will fully research everything about this. And then after that, you just gotta move on and you have to put brackets in the first draft or your zero with draft and just go. I also continued to just get more ideas for that idea I had at the beginning. <laughs> of her masterclass. So like each time she talked, I really see how this class to me feels like a walk along through it with her. Like take this again as you're drafting or as we're outlining, as you're doing this. And like, anyways, so I had several points where I got an idea here, an idea I had to put in here, and then some stuff to the side. <laughs> We move on to several character lessons and she does like a Maslow's hierarchy breakdown. She talks about externally and internally driven character arcs. I love just her examples along the way. She kind of laughs at herself as she's giving examples and it just makes it feel so real. She's just a great instructor. It makes sense giving her counseling background, um, but she does say that she thinks the soft science is just as important as the hard science or getting like the science part right, is you need to get the psychology of the characters right too. And she talked about how science fiction or how speculative fiction has changed over the course of the past few decades and how, you know, they used to kind of info dump and they used to not care about as much of the psychology of the characters as long as they got the like science part of stuff right. So anyways, it's just really interesting to hear her talk about that. I am actually going to have to look up what the like golden and silver age of sci-fi arc. She referenced that and I'm just fascinated by this idea of an evolution Evolution and having certain ages for each of them. I'm curious if that's true for other genre fiction as well. So anyways, I have stuff to look up. I'm excited. <laughs> 
I really appreciated her talk around kind of these centers and the margins of society and people and how important it is to write respectfully and accurately and not tell someone's identity specific story. So she actually gives an example of one of her characters, one of her point of view characters in the story and he's homeless and queer. But she said that obviously, you know, that is important to his character. That's part of him as a character, but that's not the story. She wasn't telling his journey as a homeless queer person, you know? And so, it's that kind of thing. You're not telling the story of their marginalization. They just are marginalized. So it's just an interesting way to look at it. And I feel like it was, I used way more words than she did. She put it in a much better way. But I feel like that's something that we've been having a discussion as a whole on. And she just was able to sum it up in like two or three sentences in a way that I think so many people would understand. And so it's fine. Then we move on to the publication part. And I actually didn't have anything in here that was as much of an aha. It wasn't really stuff that I hadn't heard before necessarily, though people who aren't quite as ingrained in the publishing world might not have heard about it before. I appreciated her reinforcing that you are a self-employed business person when you are a writer or when you are trying to be a published writer. She talks a little bit about how to pitch. I loved her anecdote about what her and her writing group would do every time they got like 50 rejections or 100 rejections or 150 rejections. It was just fun. And I think that's such a beautiful way to celebrate. Um, she does have a lot of resources she mentions throughout the entire course, which I really appreciated. It actually reminded me of Roxanne Gay's Skillshare class, where they're just dropping a lot of resources that they themselves have used, which I don't remember seeing as much or I didn't note them as much in the other two master classes that I've taken. And finally, I put the, <laughs> at the end, Together We Rise. The entire last lesson on writing when marginalized was beautiful, and I wish everyone would see, if not the entire course, everyone could see that lesson. And how many pages of notes did that end up being? One, two, three, four, five, five and some change. <laughs> that wasn't quite as dramatic as I wanted it. Hold on. There we go. Overall, I freaking love this course. I cannot thank Shay enough for reaching out to Becca and me and being like, we should take it together because I can't wait to see what nuggets they got out of it. Obviously they've walked very different lives than I have. And I'm excited to learn through them having already watched the course as well, if that makes any sense. To end off, not because I think that the courses need to be compared, but at a certain point you take enough of these master classes and it gets to be kind of an inevitable, like which has been your favorite so far kind of question. And I have my own sort of hierarchy of the three that I've taken. And I I think Neil Gaiman's and N.K. Jemisin's I would treat a little bit differently. N.K. Jemisin's really felt like I was walking through and that I will retake this course anytime I have another sort of speculative fiction project that I'm working on and I want to try and build up the world in that way. In fact, again, this idea that I've had cannot let go. So excited when I got to the character bit. So I was starting to flesh out who my two main characters were going to be. I was just, oh, I got so excited. Whereas I really appreciate Neil Gaiman's for having a kind of surplus of examples that he used from his own work in full because he had a lot more short stories. It was really nice to kind of compound the lessons that way. So I appreciated them both for very different reasons. So I'd say they are like equally my favorite, I guess. I got different things out of both of them. Whereas I'll say that I appreciated James Patterson's. It was the first one I took. I liked it. I would still, you know, potentially recommend it. But if you only have so many options, gosh, I do not think you could beat these two master classes. I cannot wait to rewatch this one and go back over it and outline my story. <sighs> Maybe for NaNoWriMo. <laughs> <laughs> but that is gonna be it for me. Again, shout out to Shay, shout out to Becca. Thank you guys so much for doing this with me. I believe we are going to have just like a general discussion chat over NK Jemison's Masterclass, a live stream at some point. So if I have any details by the time this video goes live, I will link them down below in a pinned comment or something. But otherwise, please do comment down below. Let me know if you've taken any of the masterclasses. Let me know if you've read any of NK Jemison's books. Let me know what you think about speculative fiction in general. Let me know actually if you know anything about the golden or silver or whatever sort of ages of other genre fiction. Yes. And let me know if you've ever gotten an idea for a new novel project or a new short story project or whatever while you were taking a class, whether that is in a master class specifically about writing or just like you're sitting in your accounting course one day. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching and thank you especially to some of my new patrons this month. Charlotte Johansson, R.L. Gore, Alex Clark, Beth Ann Rumsey, Tony Perkins, Sandy Sakar, Jen, Michelle Taylor, and Raven Stanley. And I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye. And I'll say that, <laughs> And I'll say that of Neil Game. And I'll say that I. Mm. Mm.